<laughs> Amen. Ready? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I'm just testing the mic. Hallelujah. God is good. 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 I think I'll use the black one. Give me one minute. Set up the projector. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. One minute, and I'm ready to go. I'll be ready. Amen. Amen. People of God, thank you so much for your patience. Um, Colossians chapter 1 verses 18 says that Jesus Christ, he is the head of the church, which is his body. He's the, he is the beginning. He's the firstborn from the dead. And all, all things he has, the preeminence. Amen. So this morning I give the preeminence to the Lord Jesus Christ because he's the head of the body, he's the firstborn, he's also the beginning. In my life he always has the preeminence. The Holy Spirit has the preeminence. I give all the praise, all the honor, all the glory to the Holy Ghost. He's already here. How do I know he's here? He's in all of us because we are the temples of God. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So where we go, he goes in Jesus' name. Pastor, I acknowledge you. Thank you for permitting me uh, to speak from your pulpits. I welcome everyone that is here. Thank you for listening. Um, I'm ministering. Okay, I'm uh, Pastor Eric Skeet from the, uh, the Logos of Christ ministry. I'm ministering today on a very controversial topic. It is not very well understood, but I understand it. Okay, let me get to the beginning. Um, 
Okay, this is what I'm ministering on today. It's, this is still in the kingdom of God. I'm ministering on what happened to hell and death. What happened to hell and death? People of God, we must understand the, the excellency, the efficacy of the finished work of Jesus. What I'm going to be speaking about today is all about the finished work. When he said it is finished, he hung on the cross. The last words that he spoke, he said it is finished. And when he said it's finished, he meant it is finished. When he said it's finished, hell was shut. He shut hell. When he said it's finished, he meant death is abolished, was abolished when he hung on that cross and he drew his last breath. When he said it's finished, he didn't need my help. He didn't need the help of anybody. It was him and the Father and the Holy Spirit. They finished the work that was preached and talked about from the foundation of the world. Acts chapter 3 uh, verses uh, 21, it says that heaven must receive Jesus Christ until the times of restitution or restoration of all things. People of God, whoever's listening by YouTube, I declare to you that we are now in the times of restitution of all things. It is left up to us to finish the work that Jesus started in the flesh. He said it was finished, so he finished everything he had to do, and he's passed the baton to us. Amen. Pastor Eric Ski, you'll find me on YouTube on the Logos of Christ Ministry, and you'll find me on my website at www.logosofchrist.com. Amen. What happened to hell and death? I'm telling you what happened. I'm telling you from the very beginning, hell is shut. Death is abolished. Jesus has the keys of death and hell. He shut hell, he shut it up. So you ask yourself the question, if people go into hell from now on, Jesus is the one that's putting them in there. And I can guarantee you he is not because he shut it. Let me carry, go on with the script. Let me give you some meat from the, uh, right, this is what scripture says. In Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14, it says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same flesh and blood, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. So when he hung on the cross, there were three crosses on Calvary. His revelation. There were three. It wasn't only Jesus on the cross. There were three crosses. Jesus was in the middle. And one of the thieves on one of the crosses said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. That was Adam. That was the Adam in the garden. He said, remember me. Another one, the other thief said, if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. That's what the other party said. If, you, if you're the Son of God, come down from the cross. That was the devil being destroyed at Jesus' death. How do I know? Because in Matthew chapter 4, verses 8, when the devil took Jesus upon a high mountain and said unto him, If you're the Son of God, bow down and worship me. Another one said that uh, if you're the son of God. So when you hear that statement, if you're the son of God, that's the voice of the devil. If you're the son of God, come down from the cross. But that is what the devil and his people wanted. So the three crosses on Calvary symbolize, typified Adam being restored and the devil being destroyed. And that 
is represented in that verse, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. For as much then as the children, which was us, are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same flesh and blood, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. So through his own death, through Jesus' own death, burial and resurrection, he destroyed the devil. That's how that was fulfilled. Everything was fulfilled on the cross of Calvary. Amen? Moving on. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Okay. So we understand that, that through his own death, Jesus destroyed the devil. Amen? Philippians 2 verses 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. We've all heard that scripture before. I won't labor. Now I'm going into the meat, getting into meat, into revelation knowledge. Let's go to the Old Testament. Okay? Jeremiah, let's read. Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 30 and 31. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abomination, abominations in the house, which is called by my name, which is Jerusalem, to pollute it, pollute Jerusalem, and they have built the high places of Tophet. Tophet means burning. So they built the high places of Tophet. Let me translate that for you in today's English. They built the cross of Jesus to burn him. Did you get that? So the children of Judah, they built the high places of Tophet, the high places of burning, let me read on, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. So the high places of Tophet translated I'm giving you the interpretation of scripture. The high places of Tophet was the cross of Jesus Christ, where they burned him to Tophet. On to, uh, they burned him uh, to, uh, I think it was Baal. It was Baal. Nevertheless, let's read that again. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to pollute it. And they have built the high places of Tophet, that's the cross of Jesus Christ, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, that's Gehenna. When you read the scriptures and it talks about Gehenna, Jesus talked about Gehenna. He's actually talking about the valley. Valley is gay. And Hinnom is Gehenna. Put the two together, it's Gehenna. It's a place of burning. Okay, let's start again. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my mind. So spiritually speaking, the children of Judah burnt Jesus when he hung on the cross, when he was hanging on the cross. Typically, and according to scripture and type, Jesus was hanging on the cross, and that's what they did, they were burning him on the cross. That's what they did. Their son, Jesus. Yes, I saw a hand, Pastor. Okay, it was just a, just a hand. Okay. So I'm, interpret, I'm interpreting, the, I'm interpreting the, Old, the Old Testament. Why? Because the Old Testament prophesied about the coming, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? So the high places of Tophet where they burned their sons and their daughters, so they burned Jesus in the valley of Tophet, because Tophet is actually in Jerusalem. As I said, I'm interpreting the scriptures for you. Um, you can go back, you can watch me repeat these. The scriptures are here. Go study it for yourself. It's all prophecy, prophecy about the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and we saw it here. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So when they were burning their sons, that is typifying the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, the high places. I'll move on. Okay, let's look at uh, Leviticus chapter 3, verses 1. Let me move my script. Okay. 
Let me move that. Bear with me. We're going in. We're still in the Old Testament. Okay. So in the Old Testament, we've done that already. In the Old Testament, I want to get this. Hold on. In the Old Testament. Okay. Right, Leviticus chapter 1, verses 3 to 7. Reading, so if, this, if his offering be a, burnt, be a burnt offering, let's come down again, go up. Okay, I will be there, just give me one second. You want to go over here? Okay, I'll just blow it up over here on the, on the right-hand side. Right, so he's saying if the, if the burnt offering, because Jesus is the burnt offering. When Jesus hung on the cross, he was the burnt offering. All of these are prophetic pictures typifying the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. So this is Leviticus. It's Leviticus chapter 1. I'm, I'm actually speaking from... I've got it up, and I'm saying, so if, if his offering is a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a meal without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, and he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering. And who is, the, who is our head? Right. So as I said, I'm just, I'm just translating the Old Testament for you. So our head is Jesus Christ. That, what, that is what that scripture is referring to. Sorry, I'm trying to get my, uh, my slides to come up slightly differently. Okay. Yeah, we can see that anyway. And he shall, he shall put his hand upon the head. Our head is Jesus Christ. Who's the burnt offering? Again, that's Jesus Christ when he hung on the cross. And it shall be accepted for him to make, an, make atonement for him, the person that has put his hands on the head. The scripture says that Jesus is our atonement. He is our reconciliation. So this is the Old Testament speaking about the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because the offerer, the one that brought the offering to the priest, the one that brought the offering. So we, had to, we placed our head, our hands on the head of Jesus and he took our sins. This is what it's talking about. Verse 4, and he shall put his hand upon the head, which is Jesus, of the burnt offering. That's Jesus on the cross. And it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. And what that is saying is, we've read in the scriptures that it says that we are accepted in the beloved. You'll find that in Ephesians. We are accepted in the beloved because we're accepted because we put our sins on the head of, on the, head of the animal, which represents Jesus. And we transferred our sins onto the head of Jesus, and we were accepted. Uh, we were uh, it was accepted, and because of that, because of Jesus's death, burial, and resurrection, He became our atonement, and we passed our sins to Him. So that's some Old Testament. Okay, let's read in some more. And He, and He, us. It says, and he, that, that'll be us, we shall kill the bullock before the Lord, and the priest, Aaron's son, shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. I'm, inter I'm not going to interpret those just yet. I don't want to get there. And the sons of Aaron, the priest, shall put fire upon the altar, and the fire is the law of God. The fire is God's law upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. Here we go. Leviticus chapter 1 verses 8. And the priest, the priest, the priest of the Levitical uh, priesthood, Aaron's son shall lay the parts, the head, Jesus, and the fat, that's the anointing and the oil, in order upon the wood. This is where I wanted to get to to interpret this verse for you. And the priest, Aaron's son, shall lay the parts, the head, and the fat, in order upon the wood, the cross that is on the fire, God's law, which is upon the altar, which is the gospel. I've just interpreted all of that for you. I'll say that again. I'll read it as it is and I'll interpret as I go. And the priest, the Aaronic priest, 
of the Levitical order shall lay the parts, the head, Jesus, and the fat in order upon the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar. So the head is Jesus upon the wood which is his cross that is on the fire which is God's law, which is upon the altar which is the gospel. I said a lot there. There's a lot to be interpreted, but I didn't really want to labor that for too long, okay? Because I'm still talking about what happened to hell and death. Amen? Go to my next slide. I've already said, hell and death is shut. Revelation. Now, these are the verses. Hell and death is shut. Revelation chapter 1, verses 18. It says, I am he that lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. You have, to, you have to, to really get deeper understanding of the Word of God. One has to study the Old Testament, the New Testament. One also has to study Hebrew and study the Greek. And in the Greek, this word keys is the word shut. It means to shut or to close. Okay? And he that lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of shut hell and of shut death. That's what he's saying. Let's continue. Okay. I will expand on this some more. Death is abolished. Let's find the scriptures for that. Okay. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Now, these are not my words. This is scripture. Uh, I've had it said to me, Eric, are you saying? And I, my response is, no, Eric is not saying. The scripture is saying. Amen. And I'm interpreting, interpreting it for you. Many times, oh, Eric, are you saying, oh, is that, no, no, excuse me. Sorry. Excuse me. Eric is not saying anything. Eric is nothing. I'm just showing you what the scripture says and how to rightly divide the scripture. Because not everybody is able to rightly divide the scripture. Okay? Fine. Right. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. I'll read it. Who has saved us, we're talking about Jesus Christ, the Christ who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, so God has purpose, he has grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Even before he created this universe, this was already done, it was already his plan, okay? But is now, the key word, but is now, so all of these things were planned before the world began, but verse 10 says, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I'm declaring to you that Jesus has shut hell. He has destroyed the devil who had the power of death. Okay? And... He has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. These are not my words. These are the words of Jesus Christ. I did not say this. This is not my opinion. This is what the word of God says. And the scriptures are, it's the puzzle, the, the scriptures are puzzles, riddles, figures, enigmas. Uh, there's all kinds of things, and the puzzles have to be solved, the enigmas have to be interpreted, the figures have to be, uh, the reality of the figures and the shadows, you have to get the reality and so on and so forth. And this is why a lot of teachers have difficulty with a lot of scriptures, because they cannot rightly divide the Word of God. Now there's some very well-meaning preachers and teachers, but they just have to come to the place of understanding to interpret Jesus' parables, Paul's allegories, Timothy's uh, uh, figures, and so on and so forth. They have to be interpreted. Okay? The Word of God has to be rightly divided. How does one rightly divide the Word of God? One has to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of God. And I'm declaring there are many well-meaning, sincere preachers and teachers that are not rightly dividing the Word of God. 
So the interpretation or uh, the solutions, the answers that they come up with is incorrect. It is erroneous. Jesus said to the Pharisees and the Sadducees who did not have the Holy Spirit in them, he says, you do not understand the scripture, nor the power thereof. This was Jesus speaking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. These were the scribes, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the lawyers in Jesus' time that were well-versed in the law of Moses, but they were not well-versed about him because the, the scriptures is, is, was always, is always describing the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which I've just demonstrated to you in uh, Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 30, Leviticus chapters 1 to 8, that Jesus is the head, he's the burnt offering, and this is how one has to rightly divide the word, and it's impossible to rightly divide the word unless you know the Old Testament. Impossible, you know. Amen, I'll move on. So, hell is shut, death is abolished. I will continue, okay? Right. Where did death come from? Where did death come from? Can anybody answer? Thank you for asking. Let, let's, let, let's let the scripture answer it. The scripture will answer where death came from, okay? Here we go. For since by man came death. That word man is Adam. So since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. So the answer to death was Jesus. By Adam in the garden came death. Not my words, because I'm always asking questions. Lord, why did you say this? Why did you say that? Why did you do this? Why did you do that? Why, what, where, when? So when you're reading scriptures, always ask yourself those questions. Why did you say this? What season is it? Where did Jesus go? Everything was prophesying his death, his burial, his resurrection. Continue to read. For since by man came death, not my words, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. This is why Jesus is the resurrection. Death came by the Adam. The resurrection came by Jesus Christ. This is why he is the resurrection. He is the resurrection for dead people. Moving on. For, here we go. Next verse. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. I've, I've had fellowship with people discussing those verses and they refuse to speak to me. Because they said, in Adam all die, in Christ all shall be made alive. I'm, 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 I'm preaching and talking heresy, false doctrine. But I didn't say it, so they got, some people got offended because they said that. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Okay, moving on. My note, notice that there are two men in these two, in these two verses. There are two men in these two verses, two men. And who are the two men? The man Adam, the man Adam, and the Christ. I said, notice there are two men in these, in these two verses, the man Adam and the man Christ Jesus. Amen? Death came by Adam. We've already read it up here by Adam. By Adam came death. And the resurrection came by Jesus Christ. Two men, one brought death, another one brought life. Amen? You follow that? Okay, moving on. <sighs> So that is why Jesus is the resurrection. Death and the grave are for the human body. I'm going a little bit deeper to explain scripture so that we can get a better understanding. Death and the grave is for the physical body. Okay. I'll prove that by scripture. Okay. And they fetched forth Uriah of Egypt and brought him unto Jehoiakim, the king who slew him with the sword and cast his dead body into the grave. There's other scriptures that says the same thing, but I'm just choosing some, okay? Death and, death and the grave are for the human body. And all three, death, grave, and the body, are mentioned in Jeremiah chapter 26, verse 23. I only say what is in the scripture, and one has to interpret one has to sit down and just meditate. Okay, what does this mean? Okay, so death grave for the body, and here we go. So, reading that, and the effect for Uriah of Egypt brought him unto Jehoiakim the king, who slew him with the sword and cast his dead body into the graves of the common people. Okay, I'm making another statement. Hell is for the soul. I'm making another statement. 
Okay. Hell is for the soul. How do I know? Here we go. Psalm 16, verses 10. For thou wilt, Jesus is the speaker. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. So the holy one is actually his body. His body will not go into the grave to see corruption. Amen? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23, and it says that, May the Lord preserve my whole spirit and soul and body at the coming of Jesus Christ. So we, uh, human beings, uh, is a composite being of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Once we know that a, a, a human being is a composite person, spirit, soul, body, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 says the same thing, that the word of God is quick, it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing the thunder of the soul and the spirit, the joints, the marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Breaking that down, um, let me say it again. The word of God, sharp and powerful, the joints and the marrow is the flesh. It divides the flesh from also from the soul and the spirit. So when we begin to understand scriptures, we begin to understand things about ourselves, that we are, we are a spirit being, we possess a body, which is like a house or a suit, and we have a soul, which is our mind, will, and our emotions. Amen. Right, so I'm saying death and the grave are for the body. That's where the body perishes, and the soul perishes in hell. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, so on and so forth. Moving on. Okay, here we go. I'm saying hell is shut. Here we go. Isaiah chapter 22, 22, King James Version. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder. This is Jesus. Okay. So he shall shut, so he shall open and none shall shut, and he shall shut and none shall open. So when Jesus shuts the door, no man can open it. No man can close. What he closes, no man can open, and what he shuts, no man can open. So this is what I'm declaring to you in, in uh, Revelation chapter 1, verses 18, where it says keys, that is the word shut. He shut death and hell. He also abolished death. The, I'm, I'm trying to follow the scriptures. Very controversial subject. Moving on. Revelation 3, verses 7. He's just quoting the Revelator John is quoting Isaiah chapter 22, 22. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, these things say of he that is holy, he that is true, he that have the key of David, he that opens and no man shuts, and shuts and no man opens, he shut hell. He didn't open it, because it was already open. He came and he shut it. Okay. Revelation 1.18, this is what I said before. I am he that lives, I was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Why? Because the devil had the keys of hell and death. And Jesus on the cross, he took back the keys from the devil of hell and death. Moving on. Revelation chapter 20, verses 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit. Who was the angel? It was Jesus. Moving on. Acts chapter 17, verse 11 says, be like the Bereans. The Bereans were more noble than the Thessalonians, and they went and searched the scriptures daily to see whether these things are true. So I submit to you, listeners, audience, YouTube, whoever's listening, go search the scriptures for yourselves to see whether these things I'm saying are true, whether they're in the scripture. But I deal, I deal with very difficult passages in scripture. I deal with the difficult ones. And this is, these are verses that haven't been dealt with. So I'm dealing with them now. Amen? Amen? Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. And I saw an angel come down from heaven. That was Jesus. And he said, I've come down from heaven that you might have life and so on and so forth. That was Jesus. You have to listen to the language. Having the key of the bottomless pit, Jesus. Having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. So it's the same key. It's the same key that he had... Uh, it's the same, he had the key of David. It's the same key he had to open and shut. Okay. Having the key of the bottomless pit, because the devil had the key of the bottomless pit and the great chain in his hand. What is the great chain in his hand? The gospel. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because Paul said, I'm a prisoner in chains. I'm a prisoner of this gospel. 
I mean, change for this gospel. I can dig those scriptures out, but I'm, I'm telling you by revelation that the chain that bound the devil is the gospel of Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, his resurrection. Moving on. Okay. I've got a definition of the word key above in the Greek language is shut. Question, what is the point of scripture telling us that Jesus has the keys of death and hell? What's the point of all of that? Let me answer it. Here we go. So I'm saying, please understand the resurrection is for the dead, not for the living. Okay. This is why he's got the keys of death and hell. To let them out. They're prisoners. The devil had them captive and shut. You read in scriptures, especially Ephesians, that Jesus, when he ascended on high, he first descended. And then he ascended and he led captivity captive. Those are the dead people in the graves. You'll find that in Ephesians. He led captivity captive. The scripture says the same thing five or six, seven different ways. And one has to understand the language of scripture, the language of the Holy Spirit, to understand what is being said. He led captivity captive. He went into hell and he brought them out. He loosed the prison. He opened the prison. Okay. So I'm saying understand that the resurrection is for the dead, not for the living. If you're alive and you've got breath in the body, the resurrection is not for you if you're living. I will show you by scripture. I'll finish on this last page, Pastor. I've got ten more. Please understand, right. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. So the resurrection is for the dead. Okay. By man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Uh, verse 22 of 1 Corinthians 15. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So, I'm, a I'm answering the question, what's the point? What is the point of Scripture telling us that Jesus has the keys of death and hell? And I'm answering th that question. So, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Verse 22 over there. So, having the keys of death and hell, Jesus has the power over death and hell because the keys also represent authority and power. And no more, so, right, he has the keys... This is a bold statement I'm making. So because Jesus has the keys of death and hell, I submit to you that no more of Jesus' creation is going to hell. He shut it. It's a difficult one. It's a hard one to think about. That's the statement. Jesus has the keys of death and hell. He shut it. So nobody, no, no, not one single human is going in there. I'll read on. Hell, he shut it. People will continue to die. Their bodies will, will go into the grave. But Jesus, the resurrection, is waiting for them to resurrect, resurrect them unto life, unto God. They go in the grave, they open their eyes, and Jesus is standing there to resurrect them. This is a very controversial topic. I'm not afraid of any man's faces. I only preach what God tells me to preach from the scripture. So if anybody is offended, be offended. Amen? Amen? Right. Last one. For for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 6. For for this cause. He said for for twice. In the gospels Jesus kept saying very, very, verily, verily. Or truly, truly. This is like a verily, verily. Or truly, truly. Verily, verily. For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead. Have you ever read anywhere, has any preacher ever said that Jesus went and preached the gospel to the dead? I'm telling you now, he went and preached the gospel to the dead. When he went into the grave, he was in the grave three days, three nights, and that's where he was preaching the gospel to the dead, saying to them, I am the resurrection, I've come for you. That, right, read the rest of the verse. It says, for, for verily, verily, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. So Jesus went into the grave. They've already lost their bodies. He said, I am the resurrection. You've been waiting for me for the last 4,000 years. Here I am. I am the resurrection. I'm resurrecting you back to life so that you can go and live with God. I've got the other scriptures to back that up, but my time is finished. I won't go past there. I'll continue next week if the pastor would permit me if he would have me back in his pulpit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Pastor, any questions? I hand back to the pastor. You've never heard nothing like this. I know you haven't. Amen. No, so, I, want, I want just... Uh, hold question, it. okay. Yeah, Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. Yes. I want you to go more uh, deeper on that uh, side. You want me to, okay. Yeah. Right. So, 
to understand. Yeah. Okay. To, right. To understand. Right. To oh yeah. Yes, we can. My my mic. I can't hear my mic. Yes, the other one. As I switched it off. Hallelujah. Blessed Jesus. I've taken these quotations from the scripture. I think it's, yeah, these, these quotations come from scripture. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write. These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that have the key of David, he that opens and no man shuts and shuts and no man opens. That is the key of David, which Jesus, he said it himself. He says he's got it. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These things saith he that is holy. Jesus is talking about himself. He that is holy, he that is true, he that have the key of David. So in that verse, Jesus is speaking, Jesus is speaking to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. And he's saying to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, he's speaking about himself here. These things saith he that is holy. He's talking about himself. He that is true. He that hath the key of David, he that opens and no man shuts and shuts and no man opens. And to get further info on that is Revelation chapter 1 verses 18. I am he that lives. Jesus is talking about himself. I am he that lives and was dead. Who, who do we know that, that lived and died? Jesus Christ. So we know he's talking about himself. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. He's, 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 he's explaining to us about himself in the scripture. Amen. Moving on. No, no, we, yeah, we're here. We're still here. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I want to push you with something. Okay. There is a, a, a distance from the, you see, that particular side. Yeah. Now, in the, in the epiphany of a pandemic, in the scripture, yeah. uh -huh. everything is, let me put it very carefully. If God, God called you, God will send an angel who are responsible for this. In the ministry, mm -hmm. in every calling, whether you are a principal, you are a, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It is the ministry of Christ. Yes, amen. And, and that, may, that is the angel being sent. Mm -hmm. So when you said you are having a ministry, you are sending a commander to God. Amen. Are you getting me? That's why I want to have my brother on that topic. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know very well mm -hmm. because many people. The angels come and send the message back to the one who sent him. Uh -huh. And then when you, I mean, uh, agree that you have to come to church on your own time, that is where problems come up for some of you. When we pray, we don't receive it. Because the angels are waiting. And then you come late. The minister or somebody, even the president, is going to take it because the, the song that is singing is a deliverance. And your, your breakthrough and the deliverance, it is within the angel that are coming to see whether we are doing what the Lord said we should do. Now, Philadelphia, it just quickly means love. Yeah. The play of agape. Yeah. So but, we, mm, we mm. know the feeling. Mm. This is the glory of love. So you have to send them to write for them because they, their attitude needs to be what? Change. To know that the Spirit of God is working there. I pray that may you get a different revelation of this. So that when we are coming, I like the way the ministers are here today. So that when we get it, God bless you so much. Amen. Amen. Very deep. Very deep. I want you every day, please come early and come and write this thing. Because I'm telling you, there are certain times I will not be here, you will be here. But wherever you are and when you stand, things will work in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So any more questions? Any questions, anybody? The gospel was preached to the dead. I didn't say it. Peter said it. 1 Peter 4, 6. The gospel was preached also to them that are dead. Yes. He continued in the grave. He continued in the grave. That's us. He's now given that to us. So when he rose, when he came out of hell, with all the prisoners that the devil held captive, he took them with them. He took them with him. He led captivity captive because he went and preached the gospel first. 
Next week I will explain why he had to preach the gospel first. He had to preach, he couldn't just go down and say, come. He had to preach the gospel first. And I am a preacher of the gospel. I'll tell you what the gospel is, it's the judgment. I'll expand on that. Every time I speak the gospel, I'm speaking the judgment or judgment. If they believe, they've passed from death to life. If they don't believe, they're now going to face the judgment of God. They're going to go in the grave. But Jesus is going to be waiting for them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We'll call the minister of God in his name. Uh, please assist us and sing it. Amen. We can. We'll do. Thank the Lord. Amen. You're welcome. You're welcome.